Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter, well, we're going to take a look at a case study and this follows a question, a telephone conversation I had initially from a client which said, can you help us with the design of experiments? Now this problem is an end of line test. So we're going to use this as a little case study as to which technique I would choose in order to answer their problem. Now this is quite a common problem. So we've got a product, we're doing an end of line test. And we're getting failures, dramatic differences between pass and fail, etc. Got a nice high defect rate. So we're going to use this as a, as a little case study to show you, well, which techniques could you use? So let's start off by showing you the problem that they sent me. So the first question I asked the person on the phone, because they wanted to do a designed experiment. I said, is your problem signal or is it noise? So in other words, you're trying to put the, the, the results on target or are you trying to squeeze the results in to make them fit inside a tolerance? That was the first question I asked them. Very important question to ask. Let me show you the document that they sent me and the data that they sent me. Okay, so here is part of the document that they sent me. I'm just going to show you the histograms that they provided for this end of line test. Now what you can see here, look, is they've given me two histograms. So they're two, two periods of production. I think they've decided that part of this is because uh, they think the latest batch of material was causing, uh, was causing the problem. Um, I mean, really, if you take a look at these two histograms, uh, despite the fact that there's two different batches of material, they aren't too dissimilar to one another. One's got more data in than another one but they aren't too dissimilar from one another. And you can see from the histogram, and this is so important about never looking at data, never considering pass and fail, always look at the pictures. Great picture, what's the problem we've got? Well, we're sitting pretty much on target, slightly to the left of the target, but the problem is with noise. So too much variability. One other problem, you'll notice on the left hand side, and I've made a comment, that the measurement system clips at minus 1000. In other words, it won't go below minus 1000. That's the limit. Now that's not a good thing. If you're trying to learn what's going on, we want a measurement system with a full range of measurement. So we need to take that away, if at all possible. But the problem here is with noise it's not with signal we're not trying to put it on target it's sitting on target we're trying to squash the noise up uh, squash the noise in control the noise control the process so let's talk about the three methods that we could use to fix this okay so you can see the problem is about noise so given that it's about noise they'd chosen to do a doe they were going to go down the doe route now that's very common Everybody wants to take the high analysis. They want to analyze in a very detailed, professional, complicated way. But let's look at the three ways that they could do this. So it's end of line. Okay, so this is very specific to end of line test failures. So you've got the complete product, something's going wrong, and now you start arguing, is it about the process, is it about the parts, is it about the design? nobody knows, and all sorts of things go on. Now the technique they've chosen, they've gone for a design of experiments. Now this wouldn't be my first choice. Design of experiments, normally, what do we want to do? Often we want to move the signal, but we want to move the signal with the cheapest settings, and that's normally what I use DOE for. They want to use it, however, 
to try and find factors which are causing the variability to increase. Now, you can use DOE to do this. So they are looking for what I would call S hat. They're looking for S hat effects. The S standard deviation, by the way. So they're looking for S hat effects. Now what they're gonna do is they are gonna test, they are gonna test both part variability and they are gonna test process variability to try to see if they can find a problem. So what I mean by this, they, they have, for instance, two suppliers of a circuit board. Everyone thinks that this, or oh, that's a pet theory, That's that could be the problem. So they're going to put into the experiment supplier A versus supplier B, and they're going to see if that, that variable moves the result around. But they're also going to test process variability. So one of the variables, for instance, is the cleanliness stroke contamination as they assemble this particular product. And they're going to run the process, they're going to run the DOE where they, they do all the disciplines and everything is super clean. Then they're going to run the process where they do none of the disciplines and they let contamination appear in the process. Now there are other things that they're going to test, but that's essentially what they're doing. They're looking for parts and process in the same test. Now I'm not saying that's not going to work, but that would not be my weapon of choice. That would not be my approach. So what are the other two approaches that they could use? Well, the other side of it is you could just go for one of these. So we're gonna start by saying, do we have process variability? Is that what's, is that what's causing the problem? Okay, so we're gonna look at process variability. Now when I, I look at that, typically, what tool am I going to use? I'm going to go process flow, cause and effect diagram, and I'm going to list literally every variable in the process that I can think of. Every variable. And I'm going to ask a question, do we control it? Do we reduce the variability? Do we control it? And if we don't control it, I'm going to put controls in. Now that assumes, of course, that the problem is in the process. So they could do this, not solve the problem, because the problem could be in the parts at this point. We still don't know that. So, of course, the third choice in the middle is I'm going to look at part variability. How am I going to do that? What, what weapon of choice do I start using now? Well now I step off the Six Sigma list of tools a little bit here and I'm going to use some things that were popularized by Dorian Shanin. And typically we are going to component swap. And then once I've done the component swap, I'm going to do a pairwise comparison. Now the beauty of this technique in particular, the component swapping technique, there is a little method in the component swapping technique where you actually test, does the assembly make a difference or not? So the beauty of this method, and this is going to be my weapon of choice, if I was starting somewhere, what would I start with? I would start with a component swap. And the reason I would start with a component swap is because the first thing it does is try to ask the question, is the problem in the process or is the problem in the parts? And so that's, that's answering a really tricky question that this, this is, is also trying to answer.
but this is much more complicated. This is gonna take a lot of work. Some of the variables in that DOE are really complicated to do, and the test is gonna be relatively expensive. Component swapping, on the other hand, and pairwise, is a relatively quick and simple technique. It will help you decide whether the problem is in the process or the parts quite quickly. And then once you've decided, you can either continue with this or of course you can, you can switch into this. But ultimately the problem is about noise. And what noise is about is controlling variables. Now whilst this might tell you, you might find the answer. Of course, what you, what you had to do was you had to decide which variables were in the DOE, and you might have missed the key variable. What process flow cause and effect does, of course, is it lists every variable, everything you can think of, and it says, do you control it? So this is a bit more of a blunt instrument, but it's also a bit more thorough. This is a little bit more, this is a bit more detailed, and there's lots more process knowledge, but it's just a subset of the process, whereas this is all the process. So you, you've got, you know, you've got limitations on both of these. I would start with component swapping, and then I can decide which technique to go to next. This is a problem with noise, and therefore you're probably going to end up over here at some point. But it could also be that the design's not right, the purchasing procedure's not right. The control at one of your suppliers isn't right and because it's an end of line test you have the complete assembly and you've got to dig into the whole thing the best tool for digging into a complete assembly is definitely component swapping and that's the technique i would use so end of line test there's a little case study and there's the tools that i would use